Let's take a look at Figma from the very, very beginning. And I mean... Hey, my name is Sophie and I'm a designer working in Silicon Valley. Figma is something that we rely on, like a thousand percent. Here we go. So I am on the Figma login page right now. Let's create an account. All right, and now we're in Figma. Later, stop for free. You can get a paid plan or a free plan. I recommend starting for free if you're a beginner. So Figma has two main features. One is Figma and one is Fig Jam. Fig Jam is more so like a brainstorm area where you can brainstorm with your teammates or anyone else, or you can just brainstorm by yourself and just throw out all the other ideas that you have. But today let's take a look at Figma and where you, this is where you can design your own tools. So I'm actually gonna go, I'll get started on my own here. Welcome to your Figma dashboard. So let's take a look really quick what this is. On the left hand side, you have teams. Here you can see Sophie's team. You can also see the team project. Under this tab, you can see all of your design files. Now you can also create a new team. So for example, if you are part of like multiple client projects, you can create a new team for each separate client and share the team with your client. This way, they all your files are in separate folders and you won't get them mixed up. So in my situation, today we're just gonna have one team because we're just looking at your own design files. So let's go ahead and click on new design file. Here you are now inside your first Figma file. The world is yours. You can do whatever you want here. But we're gonna first start with a frame. So if you go to here, click on the second frame button, you're going to see on the right hand panel, there are a lot of frames for you to choose from. So if you're designing an app, click on one of these iPhone 14 or Android options. You can also click on the tablet version if you're trying to design for iPads, or you can just click on desktop and design from MacBook or desktop. Let's try and work on a iPhone app today. Now you'll see the iPhone 14 frame here. So this is basically going to be the exact size for iPhone 14, which makes it so much easier to design with because now all of your components are going to be the right size. So let's go ahead and create a few shapes. For example, let's do circle and something fun. All right, let's say this is our app so far. Now, Figma basically is really similar to Illustrator or Photoshop where you have layers. So on the left-hand side panel, you can see all of your layers. You can name them if you like. You can also create different pages on Figma, which is super useful. So for example, if your app has separate features, like you have your welcome page, you have a payment page, you also have a sign up page. You can basically create a new page for every single one of these features. And on the right hand side here, you have your design panel. You can change the colors, everything on the right side panel here and prototype here. Once you click on this play button here, you'll see what your app looks like in a real life setting. And you can even pretend to be a user and click on buttons and see what happens. So that's what you can do with the prototype tab. And finally, on the right hand side here, inspect. This is where the engineers are gonna come in here and find this really useful, especially if you're trying to translate your Figma prototype into an HTML, CSS website or some kind of app. So let's say we wanna create a new page. This is going to be the welcome page for our app. 
let's say we also want to create a payment page and we also want to create a login um, create account page so personally when it comes to organizing my files I also like to make it a little cleaner what I would do is I will actually create a thumbnail and I'm going to group my thumbnail in the very beginning and then I like to create a space so that I know there's some sort of separation between the thumbnail page and all the other pages where I have my designs. And I also like to create a separate page for all of my archive designs. Like this. You can also use emojis to make it a little more fun to look through. And you can also name each of your sections. So for example, I'm going to name this WIP, which means work in progress. So this way, when you're done with your designs, you can actually group them into a new one called done. Or maybe if you like, you can name it handoff, where you will hand your designs to the engineer. So for example, let's say you just worked on the social page and this is how I would organize my pages and now we can actually create the thumbnail page so I'm gonna go down here to desktop and what I like to do is actually copy one of my designs into the thumbnail page so that I know what my design looks like. And there you have it. This is a really simple thumbnail that would be really helpful to you when you have more design projects. So once you're done with your thumbnail, you can actually right click and click set as thumbnail. So now when you go back to recently viewed, basically your dashboard page, you can see this app design 2023. Cool beans. So we have your thumbnail page. Now let's go back to your so let's say you are creating an app and you have so many screens, right? Let's pretend this hello object here, it's probably your logo and you need to reuse it many times. So what you can actually do is to turn this into a component, right click and click on create component. So now what I like to do is bring this out and let's rename this to logo. Now I can bring this back in So whatever changes I make in this logo main component here, you see this little, this diamond shape. When you see this diamond shape, you know that's the main component. Whenever you're doing any sort of digital design, when you're working with apps or you're working with different screens, screens have all different kinds of resolution or dimensions, and it's gonna get really complicated. So you wanna make sure that your components are all scalable. For example, if I want to make this bigger, or if I want to make this smaller, you see the scale remains the exact same size. Now you have your component here, and I look at my logo and I think, eh, I don't know if I really like that. I can actually go back to my main logo and I can change the colors. So let's say I want to change this to purple. Yeah. Now I can go back to login create account and my component has changed as well. So this way you don't have to worry about updating one thing and then having to update all the other components as well. That's why I really suggest using component from the get go. It's really going to be a lifesaver. 
And really, that's all you have to know with getting started with Figma. Super easy, and I'm so excited to see what you can create. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out all the Figma plugins that you have to know. It will actually save your life. And I'll see you next week. Bye!